right? So yeah. you got to step over that and then you've got to move through this, you know, this iron, large iron turnstile of sorts to get into the cemetery. And so looking at a number of photographs and I, I went through my books and then I did some online looking, there seems to be varying constructions. Some are literally just gates that you would move through but that iron bar is on the ground and in some cases that iron bar is actually hidden so it's underneath the soil by an inch or two so that oh you know it tricks the witch right because if if the gate is open she could still walk or he doesn't matter whatever it may be could pass through but with that iron bar hidden under the ground it's almost like an invisible barrier that would stop them in their tracks, right? It's like, oh, can't oh, go, okay. like an invisible wall. So there's a number of, of different um, variations on these witches' gates, and, and they're kind of, they, they seem to be more attached to graveyards as opposed to cemeteries, although... It also depends on the time period. So once I I was doing a bit of digging and research and I found I really wasn't finding any after about 1860. So it seems to be that they were from sort of the medieval period until about 1850s, 1860s. uh, Hmm. They were popular. And then after that, they don't seem to be so prevalent now you'll see maybe an iron gate or uh, something like that but these turnstiles these witches gates are not as um not as common well i imagine that uh, they're all over the uk oh they're they're all over and there's we have a few more of them here too in ontario there's some in the united states um and again just depends on on where and what I've found is doing some research on them is that it seems to be sort of the older um, religious groups that first settled in, in Canada or first settled in the U.S. And depending on the the background of them, right? Now, that one in Doan's Hollow is – is that – what is that Methodist? I think it's a Methodist, or isn't it? Uh, and I think I think I gotta so. Look it up. Yeah. yeah, I got to, to look that up. up but... Yeah, I'm just gonna have a look and see because I can't remember what it was. Stones Hollow Cemetery. Let's see. Was it Methodist or is it? Um, Let's see what it says because it'll often tell us here, and I can't recall. Um, It just says it's UAE, so it's probably, I wonder what it was. Let me just see if it says it here. Um, It doesn't really say. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit more looking, because it's generally, I I find it's sort of uh, the early versions of of certain things so let's see what does it say methodist yep okay so (laughs) i kind of figured that oddly enough um i'm not you know i i see some of these things more often than not um, in methodist cemeteries and i think it's just the practice at the time of it being um being as such that they, you know, sort of a, almost like the Puritans or you know, the other two, those religions, they were very superstitious in certain respects, right? And and we should talk oh, sure. about that. Yeah, we should talk about that too because a lot of this um, is, it's, it's almost, I find it really funny. Because these superstitions and these aversions and these averting of the, you know, evil uh, being able to enter into a cemetery or a graveyard or, you know, a sort of holy place, etc. Um, it in itself is a kind of magic of which that they were terrified of. But um, <laughs> it, it's. 
in its in itself those beliefs, right? And I believe the term for it is uh, apotropaic. It's a op- apotropaic magic, and that just literally means to ward off or keep away. Apotropaic, and so it the same kind of, it's almost like turning the tables, right? So it was intended to turn away harm or evil influences um, to keep, you know, so in this case, it was to keep witches out. And I'm, I'm, (laughs) you know, the witches gate. And I, I don't think necessarily they were targeting witches per se. It was just all sorts of, you know, maybe demons and evil spirits and, whatever the case may be. Their right? beliefs um, at that time, right. Yeah, the, their beliefs at that time. And so they constructed these these witches' gates or turnstiles or iron entrances um, to keep to keep these, you know, negative forces from entering into these um, these places of rest. And you see it too, not just in cemeteries, but you also see it in buildings as well so not just cemeteries but you could you'll even find it in old churches right so you'll often see like in old churches you'll get and it may not be um, iron although if you look at the old churches and especially in Europe and the UK and even here we don't we don't um, unfortunately a lot of our old churches no longer have their original doors but they had those great big huge iron hinges on them and big iron handles again for that. And I think a lot of them had um, great big iron fences around them as well. Didn't they? Right. Fences, iron crosses, um, all of these things to keep away this evil or this negative. And so I find it interesting too. And then we also get into sort of in the medieval and the, in the early, like the, the middle ages and into the medieval period, um, where we start to see not only those, you know, pieces, elements, so even if they had a big stone wall surrounding them, there would be wrought iron entrance or wrought iron on the top of the walls, right? You might get the spikes mm-hmm. and a few things like that, or you would start to see. Um, they also put in place things like gargoyles, right? Because gargoyles right. had that effect. And um, interestingly enough, you know, gargoyles were ugly, so they were supposed to frighten away the evil and the demons because they were supposedly uglier than (laughs) the evil spirits and the demons that were, um, you know, personified. But also, too, we see um, buildings utilizing things like gargoyles as part of the, not only the architecture, but as part of the system of drainage. So I think what most people don't realize, and I don't know if you do or not, is the difference between a gargoyle and uh, something like a hunky puck, right? So I do not. <laughs> so hunky pucks are actually what most people think gargoyles are. Gargoyles, for the most part, are actually, if you see true gargoyles on buildings, <laughs> and usually their mouths are wide open. And the reason being is that gargoyles are used for drainage. So water actually flows out of the gargoyle's mouth. Right. So think of like an early. I've seen photos and videos of that. Yes. Yeah. And hunky pucks are everything that does not do that. So if you see a gargoyle, you know, on a building and it actually isn't used as a, you know, to remove water as drainage, it's not a gargoyle. It's actually a hunky puck. So oh, okay. those, are, those are some of the things too, right? And then also you start to see things like um, a Sheila Nagy, which is an Irish version almost, but it's women. And so it's these little funny depictions of women and, and not to be too rude and crude, but often with their, you know, female parts quite exposed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So, um, again, these were to to ward off um, evil and avert evil. Right. You know, and I mean, we, we see this through so many cultures in the UK. It often comes in the forms, like I say, of different iron um, facets, right? And and anybody here, like even our churches here and our our iron witches gates and that, are, we're all brought over, right? With 
with the settlers when they came. Those ideas and those concepts, they, they weren't here before. Right. They're not indigenous people's beliefs. These are, you know, European thought processes, right? So these are these things that we see, they are they are from mostly the UK, Scotland, you know, France. A lot of the early people that came were from those um, those countries, and so they brought these ideas mm-hmm. with them. And so I find it interesting that, um, you know, looking at some of these earlier cemeteries, these United Empire Loyalist cemeteries, these pioneer and settler cemeteries, that these ideas came with those people. And, of course, when they were building here, there really wasn't anything any different from what they were building at home. They were just building it in a new a new place, right? So all of those ideas came with them, which I find fascinating that, um, well, you know, you you're just described <clears throat> what you just described um, with, with the gargoyles and everything. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of pictures and videos I've seen um, in Edinburgh. Right. A cemetery that got there called Grey Friars. Mm-hmm. Yes. Grey Friars Cemetery and, yeah, in Edinburgh. Yeah, they have mm-hmm. a huge, yes huge iron gate at the mm-hmm. entrance and I'd swear that every stone they've got in there has got some kind of gargoyle figure right um, on engraved the onto it I've never mm-hmm. seen anything like it yeah that's a really a, a spectacular cemetery I'm supposed to be there in three weeks <laughs> well, actually two weeks now but well, I won't bring be. me back a t-shirt um, would you no, I'm not going, obviously, um, but but I was supposed to be there uh, to do, like I said, a paranormal investigation and, and a, a number of other things that were going on. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes, that Greyfriars, the cemetery there is a really good example of that, right, is the, the and the preservation of that cemetery so that we're able to see um, all of those different, you know, and, and it, I find, too, like cemeteries in the U.K., are very different from cemeteries over here in terms of um, that, right? Over here, we start to see more, um, the headstones are a little more gen- gentle in their approach. Um, yeah, well, you know, they're- here, um, the majority are just, you know, name and dates. Um, if you're lucky, you've maybe got a little bit of a, an ornate carving on it. But over there, it seems oh, every it's single everything. headstone I know. has got it's... this fantastic carving to it. it mm-hmm. Oh, Yeah, they're really, really spectacular. And early stones here, I mean, if you go to some of the early cemeteries, you will see a lot of the, um, I guess, I, I like to call, I just call them headstone hieroglyphs because <laughs> for a lack of a better term, um, certain things have certain meanings behind them. So there's, it's quite elaborate. There's quite a long list of what those things like an open book or a willow tree or a dove or, you know, a baby, a lamb, all of those things, they have very specific meanings um, for, you know, for appearing on the stones. But for the most part, I think that that, uh, unless you had a great deal of money and you had somebody who was very proficient at stone carving, um, particularly had stone carving um, in your community and you could afford it, you might go that route. So I noticed that some of the larger, um, more prominent members of the Victorian era cemeteries will have more elaborate stones um you know there's there's a number of them even just down in the niagara way right that have a lot of uh, quite decorative stones in some of the the cemeteries too but um in terms of you know going in and looking at a lot of the cemeteries um and or grave sites graveyards i think I've always looked at what surrounds them, um, what's left. Uh, Lots of iron fences. We see a lot of sort of remnants of old iron fences and likely iron gates coming into the cemetery. And again, you know, they're all they're all there for that very specific reason. 